As a part of our communion celebration, our message this morning, we are going to look at Matthew 11, 28 through 30. If you do not have a Bible, there are some men that uh, are making their way down the aisles. They would be happy to put one in your hands. And if you do not own a Bible, please take this one with you. Let's pray. Father, your word is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And it is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. I pray that you would allow the words in Matthew 11 to revive and to refresh the hearts that are here this morning. Please allow these words to help us to worship Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Allow us to remember our salvation and the rest we have in you. In Jesus' name. Please turn to Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Read along with me. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I wanted to share this passage this morning as a remembrance of Christ's sacrifice for our sin, but not so much to remember the day of your salvation, but to encourage believers of the rest that we have in our salvation. In this passage, Jesus gave a personal invitation to unbelieving Jews who were weary and heavy laden. Come to me, and I will give you rest. Jesus knew what was going on in the hearts of his Jewish people. They were burdened with the heavy load of works righteousness. And this is what caused Jesus to reach out to them with the words, Come to me. It was a burden of being spiritually worn out, weary from the burden of sin, the burden of guilt, the burden of not knowing their eternal destiny, the burden of trying to meet God's standards their own way. One author describes our struggle prior to salvation as being in spiritual quicksand. The more we struggled, the deeper into our depravity that we got. This is probably very similar to your struggle prior to salvation. I know that my, that my weariness came from fear, fear of failure, fear of not knowing who to turn to or what to do next. I feared there was no way that I would ever experience joy or peace in my life. This may be the same fear that you experienced. If it is, please listen carefully to what Jesus has to say to you. In verse 28, Jesus says, I will give you rest. Rest in this passage is salvation. I will give you rest. Jesus is speaking directly to us and making a promise The rest that he offers is a free gift. There is, there are no conditions, no rules, no rituals, no religion. Just come to me as you are. Just as it says in Acts 3.19, repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. What an amazing promise. The rest that is described in this passage means to be refreshed or revived. Come to Jesus, who offers freely the refreshment and revival that each of us needs. I want to take a minute to look at the meaning of rest that is written in the dictionary. The the meanings listed closely parallel what we have in our salvation's rest. 
to rest is to cease from action, to stop laboring. Our rest in salvation means there should be no more self-effort to earn God's favor. We were chosen before the foundation of the world, and nothing can remove his love from us. We have rest in his grace. To rest also means that we have peace with God. We know that through Christ's atonement, the wrath of God has been satisfied. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Rest is a state of being firmly grounded and established. Our foundation in Christ cannot be shaken. He will uphold the righteous. He will shelter us. He tells us in Isaiah that he will strengthen you. He will help you. He will hold on to you with his righteous right hand. Believer, rest in that truth. We are firmly planted on solid ground and our insecurities are gone because the truth has been revealed to us. We know that we are forgiven and accepted by God. We are confident because God is trustworthy. We enjoy faith and security without fear because he is our provider and we are under his care and protection and he is dependable. This is why Paul tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and protector of our faith. In verse 28, it says, I will give you rest. And it is also mentioned in verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus is saying, come to me. Believe in me. And I will give you rest, and you will find rest, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus' personal invitation in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 is, come to me. He is expressing the heart of God in this message. Come, believe that Jesus is the Messiah and has come to save us from our sins. Believe in his death and resurrection. Believe that he is now seated at the right hand of God and intercedes into all facets of a believer's life. Jesus is seeking to save what is lost. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you are here and listening to this message, it can't be any more clear than this. To have Jesus personally saying to you, come to me. Today could be the day of your salvation. I pray right now that if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, that he would give you ears to hear the message of the gospel. The good news that Jesus came to save sinners. And I have no doubt there are many here today who think they are saved and would even proclaim that they believe in God, but in reality, they have never believed God. In other words, their belief in God has not changed their life. They have never experienced a new birth that leads to new desires and new passions for Christ. One author states, the gospel is world-altering and paradigm-shifting. Nothing can be the same after you believe it. The gospel changes our lives by teaching us that our hearts have only one master. You need to know Christians are not just Jesus followers. They are also Jesus worshipers. We, go, we owe God every last drop of our passion and our service and our devotion. End of quote. So please bend your knee to Christ. Repent of your sin. He will take over your life. You will find rest in him. We are about to receive the bread and the juice, which is, uh, is symbolic of the 
body and blood of Jesus. Believers are to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for them on, on the cross. Please use this time to examine yourself and to meditate on your Savior. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus, we want you to know that we are so glad that you could be with us today. But please allow those elements to pass you by. This is a time for believers. However, don't miss this opportunity. We beg you to be reconciled to God. Please talk with an elder or a, a member of Grace Bible Church so that you may understand how Jesus came to save sinners like you.